Think about that. Even even then, real real to real, right? Like you guys like vinyl and stuff. That's like if you guys were like talking about vinyl and you're like, <laughs> you you guys are sitting here like, no. yeah, I just got this new vinyl and I was like super stoked. And I I come in it's like, yeah, you guys don't know music <laughs> until you listen real to real though. No. It's like because I'm just saying, man, when you get when you get the experience of spooling that on <laughs> to the next, this is this wait, is wait 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 wait. <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Shout it. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names of the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Case of the Mondays. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there was something truly special about making that trip, picking a movie out by hand, and listening to your favorite power slot band on the way home to watch. <laughs> Get it. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two dudes who are better at the bass and electric guitar than anyone in this movie, Sean Pryor and AJ Vance. How the heck are you? Very good. I like to play both. Yeah. Instruments. You are a bi instrumental yeah, list. I am. I I it's, that's how what I, I that's how I identify. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Oh. I like to this is going really well. I like to slap the skins. And I also like to strum the bones. Yep. I like to I like to tickle the metal. Yeah. I like to tickle the tickle the filaments. No that's pick. What they say no pick. Just that's what guitarists say. <laughs> I don't think a guitarist has ever said that, AJ. <laughs> they don't tickle the filaments, huh? No. <laughs> they're, not doing, they're doing it wrong. That's for sure. Fair enough. Well, boys, on this episode, we discuss a movie that unfortunately <laughs> seems hard to find on any streaming service. As of right now. As of right now. Even though it's one of the most requested movies we've ever had on this podcast. Yeah. A movie that anyone who has been in a band can completely relate to. The second movie that we've done that ends with a band performing in a jail... <laughs> yeah. A movie starring Oscar award winning actor Brendan Fraser. All right. America's team. He did it. We're, of course, talking about 1994's Airheads. Well, damn, dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the confused breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern eye. But in That's order me. to do that properly, we must first discuss it with nostalgia so that we can build it up and strip it away. AJ, tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your rating was and what you remember about it. OK, guys, you are not going to believe <laughs> so. that I have not not seen this movie. I've okay, definitely seen the movie. So However, so I have not seen the first 25 minutes of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty typical for AJ. So, so I want to say it, it had to have been somewhere along the lines of like, I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to say it was like TBS or anything. This is it Comedy like Central. This is like Comedy Central style. I feel like that was how you mostly watched this in yeah. like the early 2000s. This is when you still saw like the... It was the Comedy Central logo with like the the tower at the top yes. and stuff like ah. that. You know what I mean? And but I, I I definitely remember it like that. And um, I I, I remember thinking, oh, awesome, Brendan Fraser. I love I love Brendan Fraser because he was in he was an Encino man. And I oh my gosh, I love Adam Sandler. He's hilarious as Billy Madison. I don't know who the other guy is. <laughs> <laughs> turns, out, <laughs> turns out I love Steve Buscemi now. It wasn't a fucking setup. It was. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I I watched it, and I didn't understand what was going on, and I just accepted it, and it washed over me, and that's why all I can do is give this movie a five. Straight up five, Sean. What about you, man? This is a basement movie for me. Uh, me and my brother watched these uh, movies in my uncle's basement. We'd have The Goonies. We'd have Encino Man. And for some reason, this was down there as well. Uh, we'd watch it, and I think we'd watch it on Comedy Central after that as well. 
uh, very heavily edited, obviously, but um, I we loved it, and uh, we would quote it all the time. Uh, I'm gonna give this a six. <laughs> six. six. Point two. Six point two. Okay. Three. Well, okay. Six point three. You have that's it. Two, that was your, nope. Six point three. Four. Guys, this came out in uh, 1994. I had just got my first drum set nice. two years prior, and I knew that I was going to be a rock and roll star. What kind of drum set? Oh, just nothing. Just first piece act. together. Like, yeah. no, just here's a tom from that. Here's the cymbal from that. Didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I was going to be a rock star. So then this movie yeah. comes along. Not only do I love Airheads Candy, yep. but then this movie comes along that shows like the struggles of being a rock star. And yeah. Yeah, you, if you just do whatever you can, you're going to make it. This movie was everything to me. I think we rented it at Blockbuster. Then I think we rented it like four more times in the coming weeks. My mom's finally like, we're buying the VHS. <laughs> we're going to save money. We're on the long-term plan here. So yeah. I'm calling it a 9.5 wow, nostalgically yeah. for me. Uh, Bud Larson, executive producer today, he said, I probably saw this on HBO or Cinemax in the mid-90s. I wasn't into playing a musical instrument, so I never really got into this movie. I liked Ernie Hudson, Adam Sandler, and Chris Farley, so that is probably why I watched it. To me, it doesn't hold any nostalgic value whatsoever. It was just a movie. Okay. And I think we've all had movies like that before. So he's going to say, nostalgically, it's a 4.5. All right. So as a group, we are a 6.33, which is, you know, that's kind of kind of right in the middle. That actually ties for number 68 with Hocus Pocus. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's how we nostalgically feel about this movie. It was the same as Hocus Pocus. <laughs> That that is like dead on for me. That was another basement movie of mine that my, me and my brother would used like, to wow, watch. Great. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Let's go play ping pong now. <laughs> cool. I don't have to think about that anymore today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was. I enjoyed my time, but now I just don't have to think about I'm it. I'm certainly anymore. not going to discuss it later with my friends about. Oh, I saw this awesome movie. That's not what's going to happen. And the best thing about it is you didn't have to think about anything about your real life while right. watching it. Exactly. That's what it's for. Total departure. From each other. Yeah, Basically the opposite of three ninjas. So we are going <laughs> to strip away the nostalgia of our childhood and we're going to build this up into a modern day rating. But first, we got to talk about the pertinent, important details in the movie so we know what's happening. Sean, what do you got, man? Produced by Robert Simmons and Mark Berg. Written by Rich Wilkes. Wilkes. Uh, he also did, uh, he wrote Triple X, uh, which is great. I makes, hope we do that someday. Makes plenty of sense. Uh, and the Netflix movie about Motley Crue, The Dirt, which is actually Kay. excellent. Okay. I love that movie. Uh, cinematography by John Scher Scherzman. Uh, he also cinematogged The Rock, Armageddon, Jurassic World Dominion, Pearl Harbor, and Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Look at that. Get out there. Um, <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> music by Carter Burwell, directed by Michael Lehman. Uh, he did a bunch of TV. Uh, also, My Giant, Hudson Hawk, and The Excellent. My Excellent. Giant, Hudson Hawk. The excellent okay. Heathers okay. with uh, our queen. Clan. Cast. Uh, Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser, Adam Sandler, Steve Buscemi, Chris Farley, Michael McKean, Judd Nelson, Ernie Hudson, Amy Lacane, Nina Samasco, Marshall Bell, David Arquette, Michael Richards, Joe Montana, and Harold Ramis. Rich Wilkes was an up-and-coming music journalist who, after interviewing several bands about the industry, had gained some perspective of what it's like to be in a band. Wilkes then wrote a script on spec based on his love for Dog Day Afternoon, combining the base of Dog Day Afternoon uh, and a, and a down-on-their-luck band wanting a record contract. The script was complete. You guys ever seen Dog Day Afternoon? No. With Al Pacino? I don't believe so. It's basically he, uh, him and his buddy uh, go into this bank and uh, hold it up, and then they end up holding hostages, and it's a hostage situation. There's kind of like a relationship between him and the negotiator outside. It's pretty much beat for beat Dog Day Afternoon. Okay. So people, fans of Dog Day Afternoon. With a little bit of Die Hard mixed in, maybe? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Michael Lehman was Wilkes' first choice as director because Wilkes was a fan of Heather's, and uh, everyone should be. John Cusack was the first choice to play Chaz. Adam Sandler fought hard to get Brendan Fraser, sorry, Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser, <laughs> in the I film. When director Lehman was close to shunning the actor, Sandler went to Lehman's house at four in the morning to say he would quit the film if Fraser wasn't cast. Wow. Love that about him. Wow. Man. The set was very jovial and described by uh, actress Nina Samasco, who plays uh, uh, Pip's girl yep. in the 
um, Susie. Susie, who plays Susie, uh, uh, it was more of a party than a production. Director Michael Lehman was very laid back as a director and let the actors try and do almost any idea they brought to him. Lehman even let writer Rich Wilkes uh, roam free on set and come up with uh, other ideas. It's really kind of a, um, not even not a no no, but just kind of even unheard of to have like the writer be on set because people like the director doesn't want it to be like clashing ideas all of the time. But uh, the director Lehman um, wanted Wilkes on set because he's like, I, I love your script. I think you should just call some of the shots along with me. Sweet, it's, you know, that's just cool. Pretty, pretty fucking laid back, jovial dude, and that that seems really cool to me. Airheads was released on August fifth, nineteen ninety four, and on a budget of eleven point two million, the film only made five point eight at the box office. Ouch! Oh. That is all I got. Well, that hurts. Yeah, it hurts a little bit. That's <laughs> is that that's not even. It's about half. Yeah, yeah. it's right in there. <clears throat> yeah, just shy. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, other than sharing this podcast to friends, following us on our social media platforms, and buying merch from confusedbreakfast.com, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to join our amazing Patreon community. That's a space where you can not only support us, but you get more from us, right? We've got, like, I think we're approaching 100 bonus weekly audio episodes that you get to log into, sign up, and you've got 100. That's like, a million hours of audio just waiting for you, ready to roll. We got a private Discord channel. We also, top tier people get to vote on upcoming movies. This was a voted on movie yeah. by our Patreon members. This received 59% of the vote, beating 59. out Days of Thunder with 18%, Surf Ninjas with 10%, Airborne with 7 and Camp Nowhere with 6 Those were my five choices, some of my favorite movies from childhood, and the, the people spoke. They said airheads. Airheads. So, so if you don't like that, if you would have rather have heard Surf Ninjas, which may have turned out to be a funnier episode, you yeah. got to join the Patreon to do that. So sign up, patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Join us. We would love to have you. Up next, we got AJ. He does the research for us, gives us the ratings and reviews from critics alike and fans. What do you think? You may not be able to participate on Patreon for this, but you can do it right now in your car with the, the tomato, tomato meter. <laughs> Gross. 29% on the old splatterino. That is a shame. That yeah. is the 10th worst of any movie we've done on the Tomato That's top 10 worst. Top 10 worst. Of Rotten Tomatoes. Tied with Heavyweights. Feels about right on for me. Like, as it far really as like, does. Like, yeah, like, fun movie, but like, nah, that's kind of it. You the, know? Like, the, feel, the feel of the movie is, is right there, I yep. would agree. Yes. Uh, 50% was the audience score uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, 6.1 on IMDb. So hmm. it's a little higher. That's top 15 from the bottom uh, that we're talking about on IMDb of any movie we've done. That is tied with Teen Wolf on IMDb.com. I wonder if that's like a thing where IMDb was around sooner than Rotten Tomatoes, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I, maybe. Possibly. Maybe there's more reviews on there. I don't know. Maybe. Well, there's uh, 53,000 on IMDb, and there is uh, over 100,000 on Rotten Tomatoes I see. from okay. audience. Damn. So, 6.1, though, uh, you know, you think, oh, not bad. It's a little bit better than Rotten Tomatoes. Still absolute garbage it's trash on IMDb. <laughs> on IMDb, that is garbage trash. And that's <laughs> it, it, like in our ratings, too. Yeah. Like a 6.1 for a final rating of one of our movies is is it's towards not, the bottom. It's pretty not abysmal. Good. It's pretty bad. Because uh, we like movies. We so we're saying even the worst movie still should get a pretty decent rating. Yeah. Yeah. We movies want are to cool. Do right by it. Movies are cool and they're fucking hard to make. They're not easy to make, guys. Why are you being so <laughs> rude about it? God. All right. Well, some people are kind of rude about it. Like TV Guide magazine. Uh, <laughs> they gave it a they gave it a 20 out that's, of 100. That's TV Guide. What are they doing doing movies? I don't know. They saw it on Comedy Central. God damn it. Uh, Airheads commits the cardinal sin of satire. It's just not sh It's not sure what it's making fun of. That's what they had to say about it. I, I don't. The, the, a lot of people are classifying this as a satire in these reviews. Well, how? And, and I don't feel the satire because I feel like satire is, is overly aware of itself. Yeah. Right. When you're when you're doing satire, that's what what it is. Are you like supposed to be spinal spoofing tap something. Yes. You're supposed is to be satire. What well, are there they... there is spoof and then there is satire, and I think satire is a little more subtle. Which, if this is a satire, it's really subtle because I think one of us would have picked up on it. 
Yeah. And like even watching it, that makes that's ma- that makes me more interested to revisit it and be like, okay, so is it about the music industry? Like, what are they what are they satirizing? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, Mick LaSalle felt uh, felt pretty good about this, though. He gave it a 75 out of 100. If you're All doing right. for that that tough math, guys, that's 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> uh, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, Mike, Mick LaSalle said, Although the picture's title and promotion might lead you to expect another Wayne's World, Airheads is something more substantial. It's a spoof of heavy metal culture, uh, that at the same time respects the vitality and pent up passion behind it. Hey, that's that's beautiful. I like that a lot. So yeah, I, I thought it was nice. Uh, let's just start at the top, work our way down. How about that? All right, all right. Here we go. <laughs> Eight out of ten. Uh, a modern comedy classic said Jack Rabbit Slim's one. Hey, all in right. Two thousand two. Huh? Knows Look at that. Knows his shit. Or that. her. I gotta like this one. Uh, although grunge is long and gone, one can look back at this movie and still love it. Almost ten years old, and it still cracks me up. Now, with the fact that all the main characters are stars, uh, including blonde-haired David Arquette, it's true. Okay. At yeah. the time, that's pretty darn true. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be impossible to get them all to star in something like this today. God bless the pairing of Steve Buscemi and Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. Uh, one out of two people found that uh, helpful. So, <laughs> one out of two. <laughs> one out of two. So the second person was like, "No, <laughs> nah." Kind of like so. Reddit. You just downvote stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I didn't find that. I didn't find that helpful. <laughs> but I'm gonna react to it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate like this you, guy. <laughs> you would think that Cheeto dust on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that, like, if you're upvoting or downvoting, or like if you find it helpful or not. You'd be like, well, I didn't find that helpful, so I just won't say I yeah. found it helpful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, you're gonna take the time to be like, I did not find that helpful. Nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna become a statistic. Ah, so <laughs> four out of ten. Um, John Monserrat review. <laughs> yeah, cheesy without that cult flick zip. Said Johnny Monserrat. He put his own name in the title. I don't know. <laughs> Follow me. Hey, this is a review from me. Just want you guys to know. In about oh. 15 years, I'm going to start a podcast. In May. <laughs> oh, is this Mike? <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Johnny Monserrat wrote a review ooh, of ooh, a movie. Johnny Monserrat. Was he from Rolling Stone, too? Uh, so uh, this was in 2002. I'm not a whiny film school critic, so I don't need airheads to contain a lot of cinematography and excellent costuming. Okay. And I do like cult films, <laughs> by which I mean when bad becomes good. Bad becomes good. In this case, bad (laughs) is just bad, though. There's a little humor spread throughout, but the acting is horrid. I just don't get Brendan Fraser. Maybe it's a teenage girl thing? And the plot's sort of dumb and same old. That would be okay if it had some of the zip of, for example, Buckaroo Banzai. Okay. (laughs) Or the original Austin Powers, but it doesn't. Who should see this film? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, because it's not streaming right now. Anyway. I'll give Airheads a three out of ten. That was a four out of ten from Johnny Mus. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So it was a four out of ten. Yeah. But he said he said I'll give Airheads a three out of ten. He's, he had too much uh, Cheeto dust on his finger. It <laughs> slipped. Like, ah. Classic fat finger slip. You know. Covered S- the. Sent yeah. an email to IMDb. I'm like, hey, can, can you change my? <laughs> actually, you can't change it within fifty days. Will you so. update that, please? And then he forgot about it because nobody actually cares. Right. Um, <laughs> Except for us. Yeah, here we are talking about Oh, God, I love that guy. (laughs) Thank you, Johnny Manseret. 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 One out of ten, guys. Um, Lives up to its title, said uh, Dark Being Born in 2000. Airheads is right up there with Detroit Rock City as one of those movies that's so unfunny it's painful to watch. There's something seriously wrong with the youth of today if they look to this for their inspiration. And what is Steve Buscemi doing in it? <laughs> Asking the question we were all wondering. Yeah. Just, when was that written? That was in 2000. August of 2000. <sighs> Whatever. 
So whatever. <laughs> Dude, whatever. I don't even have anything <laughs> funny to say. I know. It's, it's, it's not that we need something funny to say or even that we're tearing this person's review uh, apart. It's just the fact that they took the time to write it and we are taking the time <laughs> to add their review to our show. Yeah. And I think it's important, guys. Yeah. I feel like it's important. We're doing the Lord's work, everybody. Damn right. <laughs> When someone is just exceptionally good at what they do, you know you're in good hands. Kind of like when you listen to the Confused Breakfast podcast, you're like, those guys are so good that I know it's going to be a good time. It's like going to a restaurant and the waiter shows up and he's like laid back. He's been there for 20 years, doesn't write anything down, knows all the answers to your questions. It's like that. You know it's going to be a good time as opposed to the the brand new sweaty kid that it's his first day on the job and you know your order is going to get messed up, can't answer any questions. This is the same for me when you find the right doctor. You can feel it. You know it right away and you feel at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away in the ZocDoc app. This just happened to me, actually. Um, I used the ZocDoc app to find a dermatologist. I'm a, I'm a very fair-skinned Irishman who, at 40 years old, just realized that I'll never get a suntan. Like, I finally figured it out. So I've had years of bad sunburns, and I figured, let's get the skin checked out. I used the app and found a dermatologist, and it was, the be- it was like the best doctor experience of my life. Super cool, paid attention to me, listened to my questions, gave good answers, uh, and it's really all thanks to using this app. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed, fits their needs and schedule, like I said. Go to ZocDoc dot com slash breakfast and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many available in just 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash breakfast. ZocDoc dot com slash breakfast. I did it. So should you. It's a free app. Just download it using our code. See what you think. You'll be helping this podcast out by supporting this amazing company who's directly sponsoring this podcast. Back to Airheads. (laughs) <laughs> well, boys, this is a soggy dream come true. My entire musical career has been me farting on a snare drum for 15 minutes no. in front of other bands and their girlfriends. I ain't farting on no snare drum. Now my hard work is paid off, and I'm about to walk out in front of 20,000 screaming fans at the forum. There's only one thing to say into the microphone. Rock and roll! Woo! All right, scene one. Chaz sneaks into Palantine Records and tries to give his demo tape to Jimmy Wing, a record producer. He gets thrown out, and once his girlfriend Kayla gets home, she throws him out of the apartment. He goes to stay with his other bandmates, Pip and Rex. They decide to sneak into a local rock station, KPPX, to get their demo played on the air. A station employee named Susie lets them in on accident. Can Do you mind? Go ahead, please. As a child, I love this, I love this opening scene. You know, like, it's got all these, like artifacts of being in a band and it's like super cool it's got cool music as an adult i really i really didn't like it but mostly because i realized motorhead fucking sucks yeah. <laughs> lemmy, we're gonna have some problems. lemmy is not a good singer no and i do not think lemmy is god no we're gonna have oh boy mm. would you ever put this song on and be like cool i want to hear this song yeah did you listen to it on the way over here? Yeah. Damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but like, just because you have a cool name and you're from the rock and roll era and you're a cool dude like Lemmy and you got a band, it doesn't mean you're good. I really think that um, Motorhead's great. And I, th- I, you know, I wouldn't know. Ne- <laughs> okay. All right. Collect yourself. <sighs> Easy. Easy, Sean. Um, <laughs> I probably would never like choose to put them on while like <laughs> driving somewhere and be like, "Yeah, this Motorhead album gets me." I probably wouldn't do any okay, of that. Okay, okay. But I like Motorhead. I, and I say this because I just played a show <laughs> and I just heard like some people who were there at the show. I, I don't I don't know. And they're like, "You know what? I, without Motorhead, rock wouldn't be the same." And maybe that's true. It's just like, are we still talking about this? 
<laughs> we're still talking about no one's actually listened to motorhead but it just sounds cool to say that you've listened to motorhead it say really cool does. things like lemmy's god and then people are like oh he must be cool he likes lemmy there's very there's uh, someone so many more <laughs> people that are better than him there's there's a lot of there's a lot of these like rites of passage yes. like you better like it or you're not a fan <laughs> of rock you're not a fan of music if you don't like stairway to heaven <laughs> Lemmy is God. <laughs> Appetite for Destruction 1 and 2. And Jimi Hendrix is the all-time greatest guitar player, and no one's ever surpassed him in the history and the future. <laughs> okay? So okay. that's what it is. Are we friends now? Uh, so if you can get well, on board actually, with that, actually, we can I, be friends. Actually, I don't really agree with a lot of that. So, Well, then oh, you're yeah. a fucking idiot. <laughs> All right, you sorry. don't know no music. I'm so sorry, Sean. I, let me okay. Let me let me try this again. <laughs> all right, all hey, right. dude, how about that oneer? Dude, that oneer is dope. The intro is really cool. I I like to backtrack a little bit more. <laughs> well, damn it! The, I tried to get you out of this. No, no. The the intro. I like the s- despite the song. What people might think, and you can have your opinions. I don't really care. But uh, <laughs> the the like the art and everything, like the Fender yes, picks yes. and like the uh, reconstruction of the guitar is a super cool thing to watch. I really liked it a lot. Just tight. Uh, <laughs> so they get into this one-er. The, no. uh, okay, go. Talk about the film. Cool, yeah, the, the cool one-shot. Okay, shot. this is this is the, doesn't it doesn't deserve to be here. Like, yeah. the, the Michael Lehman did not need to do this, but this takes a lot of direction. And once he once Chaz, our Oscar winner in this movie, yeah, go like grabs his tape. And once he walks into the the KPP or uh, the record yep. studio, Palantine, Palantine. Um, it's pretty much from the lobby up to the second level. As people are walking by, as he's got like people in the elevator with him, the, like a gimmick band doing like yeah. where's Wa- or not where's Waldo, but like Doctor Seuss or some Dr. shit. Seuss. But what it, do we say? Don't say anything. Don't say anything. <laughs> but it doesn't cut, right? So we spent a fortune. No, it stupid doesn't cut. Hat. And so it's I like think a, it's when they come out of the elevator through all the meetup to get to Jimmy Wing. Yeah, and so it's like the okay. camera's like on a crane like this, and so someone had to like detach that. Damn. And like take it as a steady cam or, you know, like it was on the same rig or something like that. It was like that was super fucking and impressive. He even like goes into an office to hide from someone and the camera spins around. Yeah. Him. It's like, wow, th- that's not the shit you notice as a kid. You have to get that timing just right. Yeah. And I don't Maybe know. Maybe that's why were... they went over budget on this movie. Could be. Could be. <laughs> For the oneer. <laughs> For the oneer. We got to get the oneer. Cut. Reset. <laughs> what? <laughs> Reset. We're getting this oneer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, so I I love this because um like like we've mentioned before, uh, maybe a, a million times. We've all been in bands. We were musicians, you guys are still in bands. Um we all we all love this and we all probably went through something similar in our careers at one point or another, right? That you you just think if I can just get on the radio Man, we'll make it big. If people just hear what I have they to say, just hear it. If they just hear our music. We'll make it. Like I, I, I know it. Or you just released, like you just got got some music or something. You wanted to show it to people, or like we just we get got to get a record deal. You know what I mean? And this is this might be close to the end of when that era probably really ended, right? Sure. Well, yeah. think, pretend you're a pretend you're a kid watching this. Like you're a 18 year old kid right now watching this. You'd be like, well, why don't they just like get it on YouTube and TikTok and stuff right. like that? You know, well, uh, yes. 10 years from 1994 when this came out, you, you know, you're forced to listen to the U- uh, YouTube record on your fucking I- iPod, <laughs> right? You know, right. like that's YouTube is like, if I could only just get people <laughs> to <laughs> listen to this album, we're gonna be relevant again. <laughs> No, and see, and that's that's what a beautiful movie this is in in a way is like if you have been in the band culture, we've all been through that mentality, like AJ says, but we've also all been in shitty bands that there's a reason why no one likes us. Yeah, <laughs> but you still yeah. have that mentality of like, no, I swear, like if that me being on the beach trying to get on guts, like if that guy would just walk by and right. see me, I could be on Nickelodeon guts. <laughs> No, I no. can't. I can't do it. I and can't you, be on guts. You got to do it yourself. And uh, I, th- I think that's a mentality that um, like you really have to have. And I think that's part of the mentality that he kind of has, mm-hmm. Chaz, where it's like, well, I'll just go into Palantine Records. And it's like, well, obviously they don't want you there. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if this is the way that it's got to be done and you think that it's really good, you know, keep keep trying. 
I just there's no reason to not keep trying. Yeah, I remember there's a very I had a very we had a very similar story to this when like my band was in it was my band that we had in high school, right? <laughs> And we recorded our like first like three songs or whatever on a computer. We did it in a basement. I mean, it was DIY to all get out. Sounded okay, maybe. Probably not. But we were stoked, right? Probably not. <laughs> for, for, just be honest. <laughs> like, we'll be real about it. Pro- probably didn't sound great. And so, but you were like, awesome. We And we got the jewel cases and CDs yep. and mm-hmm. we did it and we burned them on. To the CD, and we went up to Gabe's in Iowa City. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we like we were like we could we could give him this like if you just we'll just, we'll hand just it to give him. it to him. And I remember walking in, uh, and the guy the guy who was booking at Gabe's was at it, the time was it Doug? Doug, yeah, <laughs> Doug. Doug was uh, like he, he's pretty prolific in like that music scene, yep. you know, yep. probably still is. And uh, he played in a, a really good band, but totally different music. But anyways, he was booking for Gabe's, and. Doug was at the bar when we went in there and we handed him the thing and we were like, hey, there's our music. We hope you'll listen to it. And if you want to book us, then give us a call. We, we, we wrote our information our, our on Our MySpace it. is on the back. And our MySpace <laughs> is in there and we wrote down our, our phone number and everything. And he's like, oh, no, I don't call you. <laughs> <laughs> he was basically Jimmy Wing. He was Jimmy Wing. I can't, I can't take that. And he was basically, I mean, he took it and he probably set that thing like behind the bar and got used as like a coaster for yeah. their like dirty spoon couple or thing, right? <laughs> that you're just like, that's, that's where they set all their, like it got destroyed probably, right? Because that's what happens. It's like, they don't call you. You yeah. do have to work very yes. hard to get very it in young. front of people. And do you understand how good you would have to be for like a a CD? Like hand them a CD, they listen to it and think, "Oh, oh my god!" god. <laughs> but it's not going to be like, you know, I'm not going to oh find. My god. Oh, oh. Where's the case at? I need to call these guys. Oh no! <laughs> it's your brother, Marvin Barry. <laughs> You know that new sound you've been looking for? Yeah. Like, no, no, it's oh, not going to Oh, yeah, yeah, Marv. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> Power Slab. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Thank God. We we uh, saw sh- we saw a Miss May I show in Des Moines one time, and I, like, I like, they were just, like, roaming around. Like, the band was just, like, roaming around. Like, hey. Uh, and the guy had, like, a clothing item. He was like, hey, do you have any, like, any of your shirts or anything? He's like, oh, yeah, let me go get one from the trailer. And so he came and got one, and I gave him the money. He gave me the shirt, and I gave him a CD as well. And I'm like, if you just listen to it, if you like, you whatever like you it. think, just like, yeah, dude, just let me know if you think something or whatever. And then like, I heard nothing. And then like, maybe a month later, I message him, and I was like, hey, do you have him listen to that <laughs> thing? And no message like ever again. And it's just like, yeah, because he's got the time to yeah. do that and and get back to me as soon as he <laughs> possibly can. You know what? I'm gonna put this. At the top of my list. <laughs> the way, the way your that. handwriting on this CD is, I'm telling you, man. Looks like you did really good work you, with this. Are you an artist, too? Because your handwriting tells a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and was, I don't mean the words. I'm just saying the way it's written. I, I, I know that sloppier handwriting means more creative person. That's right. So That's yep. right. You're really in your left brain. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it, too. Like, Chaz makes a few mistakes. He makes the yeah. mistake of just walking in there and not knowing the business. Two... Fucking reel to reel tape? Yeah. What are we doing here? Dude. This is this is nineteen ninety four. By nineteen eighty nine, CDs had begun outselling uh vinyl and cassettes. Eighty nine? Eighty nine was when CDs were the preferred medium. I could see if, that means compact discs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So it's right. weird. Like it was like a disc and yeah. your computer used to have a thing that you'd put it in there. It yeah, was, you could ah, you could super crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, remember, when we made CDs, when we say burn CDs, it was your computer yeah. actually made them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, by, so this is five years later from when <laughs> CDs are already the preferred medium of the last two mediums bef- that came after reel to reel, and they're walking in with this thing, like which obviously later on we're going to talk about fan theory that there's that was this the worst movie could ever made bringing that bringing that reel to reel. We prefer analog. You know, look, it just sounds better. It's just warmer, man. Yeah, it's just it's got it's just 
I don't know. I just think it's a lot is more tape, honest. Is tape analog? My is tape. It, yeah, I guess. Yeah. My vocals are, are are less tinny. When this it's is on tape. Isn't that what he says? Yeah, like yeah, later he on, says, he's like, it does like my, the warmth of like my backup vocals and stuff. Don't <laughs> like shine through on the when it's on cassette or something. It's like, but think about that. Even even then, real real to real, right? Like you guys like vinyl and stuff. That's like if you guys were like talking about vinyl and you're like, <laughs> you you guys are sitting here like, no. yeah, I just got this new vinyl and I was like super stoked. And I I come in like, yeah, you guys are. No music until you've listened real to real though. No. It's like because I'm just saying, man, when you get when you get the experience of spooling that on to the next this is this is wait, 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 wait. TJ, you are on to something. That that is the, the equivalent of let's put it in all of our podcaster friends that listen to the show. That is the equivalent of you running into Sean yeah. in real life and going, Sean, I'd really like you to check out my podcast. And Sean goes, Tell me what it is. I'll look at my phone. And you go, you go, no, here's a reel to reel of our last episode. That is the equivalent of what Chaz just fucking did. I'm going to give you our, our most recent episode. And I'm going to give you like a, an early one where we're way more funny. We pressed our best episodes onto this vinyl. Have this. Take, take it, take it to the, take it to like the, the best option possible, right? Here's a thumb drive. It's like, ugh, it's USB A, not C. <laughs> it's like, ugh. I don't have any way Ooh, to connect to my new I've, MacBook. I've only got USB C on my MacBook. So, <laughs> oh, good. I bought you one of the seventy dollars adapters. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, God. Let, let me do. T- let me tell you though that uh, this was the first movie I saw Steve Buscemi in. Yeah. So much like AJ has talked about in the past, this is who I thought Steve Buscemi was. Oh yeah. I thought he was just a long-haired rocker dude. So then you see him in other movies, and you're like, Oh my God. What happened to the guy from Airheads? Yeah. yeah. Like, th- this was the first time I ever saw him. And and by the way, going back now and watching this and seeing him in that Toys R Us was one of the most nostalgic bombs that I've ever felt oh, yeah. in a long time of wo- seeing all those awesome toys. Dude. Or like a KB Toys. KB, Toys R Us, whatever those were. That was so cool to just be like, yeah, we used to walk into these stores and just go, here's a cool toy. I want to buy this mega super soaker and you pull it off the shelves and you walk out with it there was only one time i think i ever got to go to like a toys r us because we lived in a small small Mm -hmm. town and like we only went you only those only existed in the big cities cities. (laughs) so i only went to one one time and did it blow your mind 100 percent. like it just blows your mind when you're a kid to just see like there's a whole store dedicated to this stuff it's insane i i have to say though um i'll never i'll never ever say again that Steve Buscemi is not a good-looking individual. <laughs> he looks Dude, so he much looks, better he with looks, long hair. H- him in him in this movie and in uh, Reservoir Dogs. Yes. I'm like that dude is. <laughs> he's he's pretty good. What about even the Billy Madison was right around here too. The the yeah, I mean, list of people I should kill. Well, putting lipstick it, on and stuff. I think he was purposely. You know, look, <laughs> trying to look like an incel. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> like slick back hair, you know, and the sh- lipstick, clean shave. Did uh, you know? Did you know who they modeled him after for this? Did you read that? Right. Was it? Uh, not, wasn't Cliff Burton? Was it? No, it was Rex uh, from Pantera. Rex Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same okay. name, same name, kind of the same look. Really plays the bass. Okay. Does a lot of hip thrusts, kind Definitely. of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was a cool move. He looks just like him. He looks. <laughs> he looks great in the movie, I think. But yeah, he does. He does look a lot like that dude jeez rex brown rex brown are we to the sons of thunder show we are there right now so, so talk about it sons of thunder um what what are they doing what, what's the gimmick They're, dude they made it it doesn't matter <laughs> they, they fucking they, they made can it. do whatever they can no no they'll do whatever it takes because they made it so what also my my other question is pepto and beer what would you call that like what what kind of like if you were to order that at a bar what would you call that i'd call it a <laughs> Pepto beer saw. There you go. Ooh, yeah. I'm thinking more like a uh, hairy bubblegum nipple lick. <laughs> I think that's probably what that All would taste word. like. <laughs> like a, it's you know you're chewing or you, you someone stuck a, a used bubblegum yeah. on on their nipple and it's real hairy. Okay, and you licked it off. That's exactly what a beer and Pepto would taste like. I think I'd just call it fruit striped gum. Yeah. I think that's basically <laughs> okay. <it>. okay. <laughs> Kamikaze. You, oh, you got the flavor for like eight seconds. All right, cool. <laughs> and then and then the, the rest of the time you just you're chewing like it tastes like beer. Like that's 
left over in your mouth. Yeah. That's what it is. I did have to look up Sons of Thunder, though, because I was a huge Candlebox fan. Anybody? I learned to play drums off a Candlebox. Which song? Uh, well, the all song. of them far the behind. Song. Far yeah, behind. Far behind. You, you know, use a little tougher, but all those '90s drummers are behind the pocket. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the I thought it was Candlebox, and he Metallica. even sounds like it, kind of. So I had to look it up. This was a band called the Galactic Cowboys. Mm-hmm. It was an actual band, and it's very interesting that they ended up being in here because they were supposed to be the next big huge thing in 1990. And then, unfortunately, right as they were gearing up for this huge release, uh, a little band named Nirvana came on the scene on the same mm. label. Who's that? Uh, never heard of them. Uh, but they pushed, they sort of pushed those guys back down because they're like, we're going to focus on Nirvana. And so they had already released like two or three albums at the point of this movie. So it was kind of like, it was, I'd like to think that it was them like reprising that role of like, we're going to be the next big band and sort of showing that they weren't. But also, I really don't, I think they were still trying to make it. Uh-huh. And they they weren't very good. Uh, they just for just for comparison, they have currently three thousand monthly listens on Spotify. Oh, that they're band doing does. pretty well. Hey, it's more than more than Dream Thief. <laughs> well, you have one song. They have There's like three now. they have a hundred. They have anyway, a catalog. But, but in comparison to <laughs> of the, real to real, the band that actually wrote um, Degenerated, yes, was a band called Regan Re- Youth. Reagan Youth. Reagan Youth. Yeah. Very awesome punk band. They currently have eighty thousand monthly streams. Yeah. So just. Just putting it out there that you know, the Galactic Cowboys didn't do very good. No. Well, they well they well. made it this far. <laughs> hey, we just, thank Ian for putting out our record, basically getting a sign. We just want to thank KPPX <laughs> and Ian for getting a sign, getting a thank you for everything. <laughs> did they make, did they did they, did they get Burt Kreischer or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank Bert Kreischer yeah, for getting we're... us on Bertcast and basically getting us signed. Basically getting us signed. Get sign. <laughs> they look like they're like the the more party goers from the party that Keanu goes to in Point Break. Ooh. They look like the band. They 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 got together a band. Like they're like, oh, they're gonna rob banks. Okay. We don't want any part of that. I could see that. Let's go a little more south to LA and try and uh, try and start a band called the Th- Sons of Thunder. Son- Sons? Sons of Thunder Sons is better Thunder. than Galactic Cowboys. Is it better than the Lone Rangers? No, because that's funny as fuck. <laughs> Whether well, they didn't mean to do it, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna hit this button here. Ooh, oh, here's a prop. I I got to get real and deep with you guys because like this is a it's a vulnerable thing that we do here and we talk about personal experiences. There's an uh, a sticker on the in the back of the van where Pip's sitting there in Pip's van that says obituary, the band obituary, right? Yeah, he- very heavy, heavy hardcore band there. Um, so I saw that when I watched this movie, I was like, "That's cool. I want an obituary thing," even though I've never heard them, nor do I plan on listening to them. Yeah. So I bought a, a dog tag that said obituary on it. Yeah, it like more of a choker chain, and it just it had this oh. like razor blade and said obituary. Yeah, man, yeah. you were co- dude, you were co- and hard. I wore it and I wore it around, and then one day at my first job, I was fourteen. This guy, I was bussing tables, and this guy that worked there, older bartender guy, he goes, "Wait, what's that say?" I go, "Oh, it says obituary." And he goes, "He goes, oh my god, that's awesome! How, like I love obituary. How'd you get that?" And I, for some reason, said, "My uncle's in the band." Uh. And he goes, Uh-oh. he goes, oh, really? Bob Johnson? Bob Johnson's your uncle? And he started, like, naming facts of obituary. And I was like, I don't know why I said that, because that's not true. <laughs> and then I took it off and threw it in the trash. And so I, I just want to relive one of the saddest moments of my life, and I want the obituary sticker, and I want it. <laughs> So I want to see it every morning. You, you threw it away <laughs> so you would not, no longer get approached by like middle-aged yes. dudes who like obituary. Yeah, I used to think I was so cool among my friends to be like, you don't know what this is. Yeah. This is cool. And then a guy, middle-aged man approached me and was like, I know what that is, and you don't. No, Take you it like, off. You it have like, a Van Halen shirt? Name one Van Halen song. <laughs> it was yeah. like wearing a Sons of Anarchy cut yeah. <laughs> and having a Hell's Angel come up to me and be like, the fuck are you doing? While so, also wearing buckle <laughs> jeans. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and white shoes, of and course. <laughs> I have a prop. Okay, uh, uh, I want the football helmet full of cottage cheese. Oh my god! Because for some reason that joke has stuck with me my entire life. Like anytime someone's like, "What do we? What do we want? Like, what? What? What, what do you want from McDonald's?" Like, oh, a football helmet full of cottage cheese. I just go to it. That's just. It's one of my favorite jokes, and I, it's stuck with me forever. So I want that as a relic to never say it again. I'm. I guess uh, if you guys are. 
getting deep. I'm going to get reel to reel deep, and I want the reel to reel <laughs> that he uh, the tape okay. the, the machine want, or the I'll, tape. I want the tape. I want his tape pre shredded and caught on fire with beer on it. Or I, I want it. I want it pre destruction, so you can listen to it. No, because I can't. <laughs> Because, but no I just can. I just want it. I just want it to sit there, and it just says Lone Rangers written on, <laughs> and the Lone Rangers, and that's what I want. I just want the real okay. to real. I just want the real. That's it. So if you've been around from the start of this podcast, you guys noticed that uh, from episode one to now, my hair is super long. Started out as a COVID project going like, ah, let's just do this. Uh, and now it's definitely a midlife crisis. Like I didn't buy the red Corvette. I'm like, I'm still cool. I got long hair. I know I look like a 40 year old poser, but guess what? I am proud of how long I've lasted with a healthy head of hair, especially knowing I had dudes in high school that like were bald at 16. So I'm happy with what I have here, but man, oh man, it's becoming the time where I got to start having a conversation with myself. I think it's the end of the road. I'm noticing some major thinning up top, and you might call this my last chance. I've searched around for options, but it was overwhelming to say the least. There's surgeries. There's drugs with side effects, like scary, weird stuff that I didn't want to deal with. I was just ready to throw into the towel until our new sponsor popped in our life with Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair, hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth nutraceuticals go beyond genetics to target multi, to multi-target the root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism, aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. It's physician Physician, I can't even talk. Physician, physician, it's God, you guys. It's physician formulated using new natural medical grade ingredients. Nutrafol's drug free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. That's the weird thing you start to notice. You dive into these pills and it's like, you'll have hair, but your boner won't work. And like, that's not cool. So. That's why I'm talking about Nutrafol. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. Here's the important part. If you're listening to anything I say, Nutrafol is physician formulated to be 100% drug free. They use natural medical grade botanicals in consistently effective dosages. So you get the most reliable results. You can grow thicker, healthy hair. Let's just try that one more time. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering the promo code CONFUSED to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, promo code CONFUSED. I love this company for taking a chance and sponsoring, but also for coming around at the perfect time. My supply just showed up. I got it in the mail the other day. Um, I'm excited to see how it goes. See you on the other side, just with hair like Chaz has. That's what we're all hoping to have, okay? Let's see you there. Well, let's move along. So once inside the studio, laid-back DJ Ian the Shark talks with them on air. Station manager Milo overhears them and intervenes. Rex and Chaz pull out realistic-looking water pistols filled with hot sauce and demand airplay. After setting up an old reel-to-reel -reel for the demo, the tape begins to play but is quickly destroyed. The guys try to run, but the police have already arrived. The three dudes round up the station employees as hostages. The They have the perfect reaction to the question that every band gets. is like, what do you guys sound like? And it's like, uh, I don't know. You uh, know, we really don't try to, like, pigeonhole ourselves. We don't want to, like, you know, just... We don't want to reduce ourselves to one genre, well, right? We, we, we want to keep it open and, and, you know... Is it, like, rock and roll? Or, what? like, what do you... Just, I mean, just you give could, me a band. You could say it's kind of like that, but it, it'd be like... It'd be like if Nirvana and Motley Crue um, didn't write their music, but a couple of them got together, <laughs> and they wrote some music together, and then, um, and then they asked their girlfriends about it and then the girlfriends also helped write the drum parts okay 
<laughs> oh wow, that's what your band sounds like. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't sound like that, but well, kind of zero like, <laughs> zero idea of what the fuck you're saying. Exactly. Sean, you nailed it. Like this is <laughs> this is every if in fact fun game for anybody out there. If you have a friend that's in a band, yeah. an original band, yeah, walk up to him and just go, "What's your band sound like?" Yeah. <laughs> Sean, what's what's Dream Thief sound like? Yeah, dude. <laughs> we got we got this question at our show. So we're like, so "What do you guys sound like?" I'm like, I I don't know. <laughs> I you're gonna have to just do it. You're gonna have to just <laughs> no do- no. You got to give me something. Like if I'm gonna pay this five bucks to get in, I want to know at least what songs you're gonna cover. If you like That's every, right. if you, you like have- every time I die, you might like us. There's, Who is that? There's what do they ten sound like? people. <laughs> there's ten people standing at the door, and they said we could either come here and pay the five dollars to get in, or we're gonna go down the street where there's karaoke. Because you have to vet who you're talking Correct. to. Correct. You have to be like, okay, so sure. what's, what's this man wearing? What's this woman wearing? What? Why are they asking me this? And if you say bands like Every Time I Die, it's more of like kind of a niche band. You're going to have to say, well, so I don't know who that is, so give me somebody else. I'm like, okay, so Five Finger Death Punch. Like, oh, oh, Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> See, I that's... fucking love Five Finger Death Punch. See, and that's, that's the trick. If you're in a band and you ever get asked this, just... And and you you can tell the person yes. listens to the radio a lot. Yes. Say a band. Do you uh, do you listen to like Buck Cherry? Oh, crazy bitch. Oh, dude, I love Buck Cherry. Cool, man. Yeah, you should come on out. You didn't say that you listen. You no. Li- nope. nope. You didn't say that you're like Buck Cherry. Yeah. You didn't say that you're like. That, hey, that no, you're, no refunds. So yeah. we, sorry. We do a killer hardcore cover of Tennessee Whiskey. Just come out. Just come out and Dude, listen to it. I love that song. Everybody does. I know. Dude, do you, do you, uh, have you ever listened to like Rage? Rage Against the Machine? Yeah. No, I haven't. No? Uh, have you listened to Taylor Swift? Yeah. Oh, dude, come on out. Dude, you, you should come check it out. I move. really love Swift. <laughs> I, 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 hate, I hate for everybody that maybe isn't in a band uh, on this, because I want to talk know. about this, though. Like, <laughs> I know. Th- this, whole, this whole scene, the, them describing the band, then him saying, my entire life force is on that tape. That quote. Just is is just kills me every time because anytime you've ever been involved in creation of of music of videos like you put so much goddamn work into this for them to listen for five seconds and go yeah it's okay yeah you know and so I love the way he describes that and the way we've all been there like you don't know what it's like out there being in a band and playing for fifteen minutes where the only people there are the other bands and their girlfriends. Yep. This is where it gets very real oh. if you live in that realm or yes. if you have ever lived in that realm, right? It's where it gets so real, almost brutally, because it is all jokes aside, boy, it's rough. It's tough out there. <laughs> Especially when you decide that you're gonna like go on tour or you're gonna drive Vacation. you're gonna drive <laughs> three hours, four hours five hours to play a gig and you don't know what's waiting for you. Mm-hmm. That is what he's talking about. And it is, it's a really rough thing. And if you spend enough time doing it, it's, that's the reason why I think a lot of people become so just vindictive of yep. what the music industry is yep. and why there's actually a lot of truth. The one thing I have to assume that they're talking about for satire for this movie is this idea of like what the music industry is? Yeah, yeah. and honestly, how it changed so so much. We're- and I think you're you're totally right in what in what you're hitting on, and I think that is kind of the satire where it's like you can't just give somebody you're recording and expect it to <laughs> no. be like it's gonna blow their mind. It's gonna be the next big thing they've ever heard in their entire life. You have to work your fucking ass off. You have to you have to get criticism from people you probably don't want to hear it from and then you have to kind of change you have to kind of adjust you, you mean you know there's the whole artist integrity thing oh thing. my gosh and you can stick Ooh. to that you can definitely stick to that but you know it's if you want to make money at this there's a there's a point where your integrity needs to ch- get checked a little yeah you know what i mean that is oh boy guys are we gonna do this i don't think we should because that's why that's why they it's why it's on the episode right? you're right <laughs> but at the same time it's it's the idea of oh there are so many people who just cling to their in- artistry artist integrity of i don't care who listens to it guys i make music for me and me alone and if anybody decides that they want to they want to listen awesome man no pause pause okay same person yep same person go 
Yeah, but fuck all those other bands that have all those fans. This is bullshit. Nobody should like them. They should like me. I mean, why didn't they come to my show? I mean, I do it for the love of music. Oh, I do it too. I, I my name's too. probably Travis. <laughs> There, I, there is such a fine line between those two things that you yes. that you need to ride. Yeah, and if you find it, and it's see, it's easy to find. It, just be a good it. person. Just be a good person. Just dude. just like what you like. Play what you want to <laughs> play. What you want to play. Write what you want to write. And take what's coming to you. Right. And like, then take what's coming to you. It's and like Catholics uh, Saturday night and Sunday morning. That line. Yes. Like it's very tough. Oh wait, Irish Catholic or yes, Roman Catholic? All Catholic. Between oh, okay. mostly so you mean Polish between Catholic. Like, Polish Catholic. Between like believing in God and on Sunday, or sorry, but, <laughs> but between not believing in God and then on Sunday believing in God and then on Monday, fuck it. No, my dad used to always say he'd be like, "Yeah, church is kind of weird, where you know everybody's in there and they're giving the sign of peace and everybody's like, this is great." And then five minutes later, they're running you over in the parking lot. He's like, get the fuck out of my way! Jesus Christ, I'm trying gotta to get, get home. Perkins. I gotta get home. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> pooped her pants in church. We gotta go. It's free pie Sunday, on. Wait, okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. But th- this brings me up to a bit of a thought here, because to stay on to that band talk. Okay, yeah. what happens if he actually brought a CD? Yeah. And they pull out the guns, and they go, "No, no, Milo, we're playing this." And he pulls out the CD, and they go, "Okay, fine, we'll play it." And they and he and he does an intro, and they play it, and the whole song goes, and then they run out. That song's not good enough for anything to happen. Right. They would have evaded the cops. Cops wouldn't have been there yet. They were just rolling up after all the getting the reel to reel ready. Right. So they would have left and disappeared forever, and no one would have ever signed them. No. Because that song was not good enough. They needed all this rigmarole to actually make this work. And that's the thing, like Chaz's battle throughout this whole thing, where it's like, oh, you get a record producer down here now, you know, or like you get a, you get uh, from Palantine Records, you get him down here, and it's like, then he's like, oh, I'm gonna offer you a record contract. He's like, nah, I don't want it, I don't want it because I, I want to earn it. There's that integrity that but comes like back you've, to you've just, you've just got. You just forced yourself into a gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> you know oh, that band that rubs station. You, yeah. I love those guys. You're gonna be on VH1. I love the '90s. You know, and there I think it in, in there I think is the underlying soft joke of the whole thing. Yeah, that they're probably they're really not good enough. Probably right overall. Like this this first song, maybe uh, what's the best it could have done is gotten some radio play, maybe in that era and they could have gotten um like an opening slot on a tour and probably that fizzled out that's uh, unless they produce some more better music well, guess what's going to happen this they're going to go into the studio yeah. three months later when they get out they're going to record their album it's going to drop about mid mid 1995 late 1995 okay. it's gonna come out and people are gonna be like this is great i love rock and roll by the time they get done touring and get back in the studio to release their sophomore album Limp Biscuit, Corn, yeah, motherfucking stained. They are on the scene, and it is new metal time, and yep. they are done forever. Yep, like they, they that's that's, it. that's what happened. They yeah. were that band that robbed the studio, like did some cool you, stuff. Maybe, and, maybe you're in a movie like Airheads, maybe. like the Galactic Cowboys, but that's it. That was it. That yeah. was the Galactic Cowboys. Exactly. Story. You have less than a thousand, whatever it is, five, yeah. like listens on Spotify each year. I just think it's. I, I think. Uh, I. I love how borderline true how uh, really true this all really is because of what you're talking about this debate of artist integrity and wanting to get signed but you you want to get signed because you want to get recognized you don't want to have to ask for the recognition you just want it to happen to you yeah and then you decide that you're going to force your way in and you're going to literally hold somebody hostage (laughs) So that your record can get played and hopes that someone will hear it and get you a record deal. But then you don't want the record deal. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> well, and it's okay. So, uh, like, they, Chaz and Rex have, they look like they've done this before, especially Rex. <laughs> yeah. Rex is just so quick to be like, this is the option that we have. <laughs> I'm going to pull out these guns and we're going to hold these motherfuckers up. Like, that's. Mm, it's yeah. the move, man. He's it, been waiting. He's been waiting to pull those guns he out. He works at he's Toys R Us. He's sick of it. He's yeah. ready to go. I I love I well I love uh, Ian the the Joe Montana. I love what he's he's like down with it. He's like you know pushes the mic towards him. He's like well this could be some good drinking radio. beer on air. Yeah, this I mean I he's into it at first. Then he, then they pull out the gun. He's like oh. 
<laughs> yeah, he at this like, point oh, he's just this like, turned. who cares? He's yeah. like, hey, well, no, go ahead, go talk about yeah. this. I love, dude, they don't even know. So he throws a microphone at him, and he still doesn't think they're on air. And, but I do love Brendan Fraser's move where they go, they, he's like, Rex, like, hey, look, we're on air. And he looks and he goes, cool. <laughs> he does this weird <laughs> little, like, yeah, cool move. I, I, w- w- can I ask you guys, if the, is this even relevant, I guess? Like, w- would you would you ever ask for this radio play or anything like that? Or would you would you go along with this in any way, shape, or form? If you like, were in a band with with these yeah, people, like this yeah. hold up, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I guess. Like, it, would you take it this far, or would you just no. would you just be like, oh, okay, well, I gotta go, guys. Yeah, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I would have immediately <laughs> said, these not. are toy guns. I'm letting everyone know. Look, and I would have dumped it out, and I'd be like, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah, but my bad. I understand. Sons it. of Thunder looking for a new drummer. As yeah. as as much as like uh, this is a satire on like the music industry and everything like that, I think it is also a satire on like the disaffected youth like these guys are just fed up like they're they poured their passion to this and they're getting nothing out of it you mm-hmm. know just like uh teenagers of the 90s you know that's why this music existed for them to listen to to get their anger out yeah you know and so they're just trying to get their art noticed yeah. i get it but no i would never do it i think that there is a there is this line of uh when it comes down to writing music and you want to get famous off of it and stuff the idea of I poured everything into this man. I did everything I could to release this stuff. When, honestly, probably musicians who are going to make it are like, yeah, I wrote a shit ton of songs. Yeah. And some of them I took a lot of time on. Some (laughs) of them came out in 15 minutes. And I just decided to keep writing music because... This wasn't the end of what I felt I could do. Well, and what you said in there is actually mistake one oh one or mistake number one is I wrote I wrote a song in order to get famous. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's mistake number one. Whoops. Well, I, I say that all the time to like that's my issue with modern day bands is like just because you started a band, yeah, does not mean that you automatically should get paid for it or people should like it. Right. And there's a misconception there that people go, well, no, but all this time we spent practicing and all this gear we bought. That's and on you. Sorry. No <laughs> one actually, no one asked you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we hope that you don't do that anymore. Yeah. You you pursue your passion because you're passionate about it. Yeah. Hence the term, <laughs> it's a passion of mine. And of then, mine. And then. Personally. Personally. Yeah. And then the moment that somebody does say like, oh man, that's huh. cool. I think I'm going to share that with my friends. Then it becomes something a little bit bigger. Yes. And at that point, you can start, maybe maybe you have something to work towards outside Absolutely. of your passion. Absolutely, yes. Right? I mean, come on. Like, we, podca- podcast? The podcast? Yes. Hello? I was waiting for someone to make <laughs> The podcast might even be a bigger core. The grand scheme of what's happening in this movie is podcasts now. Yeah. It's There's not bands enough. anymore. There's probably more people starting podcasts than there is starting bands yes, nowadays. Yes, 100%. Uh, okay, well then now I'm going to take it someplace. <laughs> Some dude busts in here and says, I need you to listen to my podcast, <laughs> but it's on Reel to Reel. And we're like, Logan... <laughs> You got a reel to reel around here, bro. We, we could maybe put this together. We don't have a reel to reel, man. And then he tries to do it, and they they start telling us about it, and then we swing a mic over to them, and they just start going on. But, well, our podcast is about it's 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 four white guys <laughs> who who really love we love video games and whiskey, but we also love food. Okay, so you love everything. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so it's like, okay, I'm sure it's off. Awesome. It's just like, can you narrow it down? Before we move on to the next scene, we got to talk about um, uh, Alan Covert in this. Yes. Oh, my never, God. Never, never, never knew that was him. He was the cop that first showed up on the mm-hmm. scene. Uh, so this is crazy. This is his fifth movie that we've done that Alan Covert has had. A He's role up in there, it. huh? He's getting up there for sure. I know. I know we got a list that's about to come up, but. But my God, I, I even had to go like write it down in my notes. Go, I think that's Alan Cover, but I don't think it is. Check later, like because he just almost doesn't look like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Doesn't really have any lines at all. And first role, from what I can tell, this is his first movie he was ever in. I want to know. I want to know like um, if this is like what Adam Sandler saw him in. Was just like, oh, you need you need to be a part of my Happy Madison. It had to be. Yeah, it would have. It would have because then uh, Billy Madison would have been the next year, right after this. And a yeah. lot of the people were in this movie also were in Billy Madison, mm-hmm. so it had to be. I I have to imagine that this this Chris Farley role is what sparked Paul Blart. 
or something, dude. Like, th- like Chris Farley's role in this for some reason. It's a small role, but I love it. It's maybe one of my favorite Chris it's, Farley it's roles. A, it's a great little role because they're so. It's again, it's so easy to just take this little role. It's a very small role and pigeonhole it into the guy who's. Oh, it's the pl- clumsy big guy, <laughs> and he's gonna trip over the 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 barrier tape and fumble in and spill the coffee on him. But they didn't do that. They actually made him kind of a badass. Yep. And I like that about him. I have a note that says Ernie Hudson, Alan Covert, and Chris Farley all in one scene. Fuck you. This movie rules. Thank you. <laughs> I don't care who Thank you. you are. Yes. Period. It, it. We keep seeming to get into these movies where you like. It was like True Romance. <laughs> if you look back on it, you go. How did they do that? Yeah. But it's because none of them were who they are yet. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, means when you watch this movie, you were watching some people come together for some magic that, mm-hmm. that we didn't know how, what they were going to go on to after this, which is awesome. Yeah, it, it is. I love it. All right, so scene three. They negotiate with the police and get them to find Kayla, who has a cassette copy of the demo. Since the station never went off air, numerous fans began showing up outside the radio station, interfering with police. A SWAT team has also arrived where Carl Mace begins to take over the scene. His team secretly passes a gun through a roof vent to Beach, who's been hiding in the air ducts. Inside, it's revealed that Milo has secretly signed a deal to change the station to adult contemporary and fire everyone. Let's talk about Adam Sandler. Okay, please. Yes, I love him in this movie. Put it out! <laughs> like, those moments. Put, somebody put it out! <laughs> please! <laughs> and even when he goes, he goes, what, 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 what do you guys call it? He goes, my name's Pip. <laughs> the band. The band. <laughs> What's the oh. band's name? <laughs> I love it. He's like, sorry about all this. Enjoy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> He's just a really, really just nice, like, affable dude. He pool really cleaner. Is. Pool cleaner. Loves it, probably. Yeah. It's like, you're always cleaning chicks' pools. It's like, <laughs> that's why I can't, like, practice or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. But he's, like, re- he's an adult. He's got a job. He's got his own business. He's got an LLC. He's working yeah. hard. He's like, yeah. this band's not going to work out, but that's my brother's in it, and I kind of yeah. like hanging out with him. I like even, drums. even when um, Rex is trying to teach him how to be tough, like, come on, you got to yeah. be tough. <laughs> Uh, pl- please uh, sit down. Please, thank you. <laughs> hey, get over there. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hit you in the head with my dick. Cause I'm a madman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a madman. I'm gonna take you, take your head off. And, uh, and, yeah. And then he even goes, "Oh, that kind of hurt my throat." Uh, yeah, <laughs> so he's yeah. just such a nice guy. Uh, I love Michael McKean. We need to talk about Michael McKean as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Clue. Um, and I hope we get to Conehead. There's another Heads movie. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, he's great Ooh. in this. He's the, the rat tail or whatever the ponytail it that says he has. babe all the time. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> can't douchey. Smoke in here, babe. <laughs> it's so douchey. I love it. He's so good in this. He's uh, the perfect guy. Like, it takes talent to play someone that you hate. Yeah. You know, like, that. that, is, that would be if, if you sign me up for a movie and you're like, no, you got to be somebody that you personally don't like and that no one will like. I'd be like, ah, uh-huh, that doesn't work for me. I feel weird doing that. I, feel weird. I, I don't I'd know if I could actually do that. I'd be Pip. I think they'll still like me. I don't think I can do that. I don't <laughs> want to be mean to them. You, you know, we, know? T- we talk about, like, especially American Psycho, we talked about uh, yuppies and how we just mm-hmm. like, ugh, it's just like, ew, gross. I don't think there's anything more gross than a, like, L.A. artist yuppie. Oh, like yeah. Michael McKean is in this, you know? He, he's like, I don't know. He's just a skeezy, like... He's got the like the ins and outs of the artist connections. Yeah. And he just kind of metaphorically sucks all their dicks. Basically. You know, I uh, I hate it. There's some yeah, there's something very uh like like sleazy about it, you know. That 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 is the uh him and uh uh Judd Nelson in this are are kind of yeah. the epitome of what you what what you don't want to think is at the top of or near the top um of the music and industry. And it is. And it is. It 100% is. Yeah. I do love the conversation, too, that they do talk a lot about, like, Chaz even talks about, like, nobody gives a crap about the Beatles and, like, uh, cramming classic rock getting crammed down our throats every day. Like, I do agree with that. Like, I, I, the older I get, I still try to keep listening to new music mm-hmm. because, like, the minute you stop listening to new music and go, nah, 2002 was the pinnacle. Yeah, you know, uh, pop yep. emo. That was that was the pinnacle. Nothing's uh, been good since then. That is when you become a piece of shit. Like you're not allowed. You're not allowed to say that an era was the best or that this man was the best ever and not listen to new music. I love that part. Modern day watch of watching this. Like they really touch on that. 
of like, no, fuck, fuck the Beatles. Like, yeah, they did great stuff, but move on. Yeah. Like, let's move on. I, 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 there's a, uh, last podcast network, uh, podcast called no dogs in space where he says the Beatles are very good. The Beatles are very good. And that's it. Yeah. And they it's are. All. But it's move on. No yeah. one actually listens to the Beatles, but we can all agree they're good. Yeah, they are very good. They do a good. lot for music, and that's just about it. And now let's move <laughs> forward. Yeah. Anyway, Taylor Swift's new album is actually really it's great. It's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. My I, I pay for a Spotify subscription so I can only listen to pre-2005. <laughs> Paramore's I, album is probably going to be <laughs> on my top five list. How this dare year. you? It's great. How dare you? I know. <laughs> Led Zeppelin's one, though. It's, you know. They'll always be number one yeah. for me, man. Yeah, that's where it started, you know? Yeah. There wouldn't be no Swift without well, Zeppelin. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, man. I, I prefer Rob Zombie because every one of his songs sounds the same, and I know what I'm getting. I know what I'm getting into. Uh, I didn't realize, like, so White Zombie's playing in the White Zombie's playing in the club, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, where, where Chris Farley goes. Yeah. That's basically Dragula, right? Like... He goes, eh, yeah, and then I'm going to sing a little different this time. <laughs> eh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a white zombie song, but it sounds like yeah. Dragula or every other Rob Zombie song I've heard. It's a little it's a little bassier. He screams a lot more in, in White Zombie. He, eh, he, yeah. he became a little, more, a, little, like, a little more radio friendly when he became Rob Zombie. Smart man. To make all of his money and everything. And uh, it's a little different. I, I mean, I love his films. Don't get me wrong. Oh, you do? Yeah. Just talking. You do. Would you rather see Cannibal Corpse or Rob Zombie when you're so walking they, into an LA club in the night? They wanted who Cannibal makes a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. They wanted Cannibal Corpse for this originally, but then like Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura came Ventura out, took it. and they're like, "We can't do Ace Ventura. Uh, we're worth more now. We just did Ace Ventura." So. <laughs> no one actually listens to Cannibal Corpse, yeah. but they want us in the movie because of our want, name. Yeah, it was, our it was also weird to see. I mean, not weird for me because I'm such a huge fanboy. But uh, at at the end credits, when it's like White White Zombie is all like the band members. Like I know, like Sean Young is like the, or not Sean Young, but Sean something is the bass player, and then it says Robert Cummings. <laughs> That's Rob Zombie. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I think the uh, I I don't know why I'm thinking of this all of a sudden, but this it just seems a little it it seems right right on the nose that there was a a movie that I mentioned in a in a Patreon episode that we did. I think uh, we talked about some movies that didn't get a lot of recognition. I think it was Vengeance or whatnot, and. Uh, uh, there's a scene where Ashton Kutcher says to B.J. Novak that he says, "Oh, you're a playlist guy." He says, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "Well, you don't you don't really seek out music, but you let a playlist, an algorithm, dictate what you want to mm. listen to, and and uh, and that's what you know. So you don't actually know songs; you just know it when you hear it. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what happens, <laughs> and that is what like everything is now. I don't even think like." If you talk to me even about old music, it's always about it's always about oh yeah have you like Led Zeppelin uh, this song this album it's like I don't know but I probably heard the song I've heard it I probably heard it I I have to imagine like that that just didn't happen at this point and that's why you're always like pushing that album you know what I mean I I don't know I don't know why I thought of that all of a sudden but that is another culture shift that I saw that that I think that they're they're kind of playing on here. Um, well, un, un, unbeknownst. Yeah. But they're, they're kind of talking about this, like, we need our album so we can tour, and then everybody falls in love with this, this song, this, uh, their, their number one hit that they want to release. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just, uh, like I say, that's a very random thought, but I just I had to get it out there because that's the way music is now. Yep. It's not the way that they're trying to do it on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about Chris Farley a little bit more, especially if we're talking about this white zombie whiskey go-go scene. Yeah. Um, he's like the m- like most Chris Farley in this movie that I've ever seen because every time like Ernie Hudson is like wh- uh, what's Chris Farley's name in this? Uh, dude, I don't even know. I don't even know if you. It's Officer Something, right? Uh, yeah, he's, he's. I'll get you. He call he calls him his name and he does that whip pan with his head. He's like, <laughs> yes sir. Yeah, <laughs> like he's always doing that. Officer Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. Even, even the best the best scene is when uh, Covert's uh, Covert's Alan Covert's cop is standing there. And C- Farley comes in late, and he just goes, <laughs> he just yes. kind of pops out from that. That is such, I mean, you don't have to do that, but yes, you have to do that he with even Chris does, Farley. He even does the good, great, grand. Which is before, this before Billy Madison. Yeah. Holy shit. It must just be a Chris Farley thing. That he must have just said it. 
He he. There, we we've mentioned that I think before that he brought a lot of just who he is into a lot of his characters, just things that he said all the time. We probably just got improv into his ahead. character. Well, and good for the, like the director Michael Lehman. When I said at the top, where he's just kind of real laid back and let people do what they want to do, noticing that you have these performers, noticing that you have fucking Chris Farley that you you know don't realize what he is at the time. You're looking like, at him and Sandler right now, going. Huh. There's something about them. They're on Saturday Night Live and they're killing it. I wonder if there's. I wonder what's going to happen to these yeah. guys. Like yeah. you're, you're feeling that. Let them that. do their thing. Let them do their like characters that they have going on in their head, and uh, it's probably going to be a fun movie. Because they even <laughs> said Adam Sandler was supposed to be the main character, mm-hmm. oh. but they they were like he's just not ready for that lead role yet. Somebody made that call and was like, let's let's have him be a band. I think that was a great call. It was interesting. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. Did you also hear when they're when he they're finding out about them all losing their jobs? Never heard this until because now I'm now I'm a closed caption guy because there's always a baby sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, they he goes, yeah, and you're all, and we're gonna be forced to restaff. Everybody goes, uh. Uh-huh. Under uh-huh. Susie's breath, she goes, all those blowjobs for nothing. <laughs> And you can't. I saw it on the thing, and I go, "Who said that? Who said oh that?" And I turned it off and went back, and you just barely hear her say it. Has it? Have you? Did you hear that? No, no. I didn't, All I those blowjobs for nothing. Um, Gross. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick that up underneath the um, <laughs> frame inside the frame YouTube version <laughs> that I had to do, where they definitely like purposefully like. Ducked and 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 shititized the audio on it. <laughs> they made it their own <laughs> version. AJ. Oh right, right, that's right. That's why we're it was talking. A creative choice to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we're not talking much about the movie. We're just talking about the music business. Episode, yeah, because we couldn't watch it because we just simply couldn't watch it. No, but yes, that was why I couldn't. I didn't pick that up, Mike. So, I, but thank you for bringing it to light because it is a very funny. Mike joke. had to order a reel to reel of this yeah. movie. No, actually, you did. I bought got it on Laserdisc. <laughs> I found a DVD. That was two sided. It was Airheads and PCU. That oh I ordered my, on oh my gosh. Was this that Jeremy PCU, Piven or whatever? He, P, David Spade. Oh. PCU needs to be watched by us and done, but I know you guys haven't seen it, right? I don't know. Because I, well, sh- we'll see. No, because that movie will never be shown on television or a streaming network ever again. Something's wrong with that where they're like, no, that will never be on a streaming network. So I'll just. If you join our Patreon by the year 2030, we will, I will mail a, that same copy to every <laughs> single person in our Patreon group, and we'll all watch PCU. You might as well just rip it because <laughs> you, you, it's, it's it's impossible to find anymore. That's fair. One more person to talk about before we move on. This is how I got my parents to agree to watch this movie, to rent it again. I was like, but Kramer from Seinfeld's in it. <laughs> yes. And my parents were huge Kramer fans, so I was like, that was how I got them to be like, We'll rent it again and we'll watch it with you. Oh, okay. And they didn't like it. it. He was great in the movie. He, he but does like all the John McClane stuff. You know, basically he's in he's in the air ducts and everything, and he's like the inside man yep. of, to uh, Ernie Hudson, who is uh, what what's his name in in Die Hard. Uh, oh, we've said it wrong a million times. Yeah. Carl Winslow. Winslow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it, what's going on, and I I I enjoy it. I I think that he's got a pretty good physical performance. He's he's a very physical performer. Yeah. But did you catch that this was filmed next to Nakatomi Plaza? Yes. Like so, that's why they're like, well, we have to like do things. This like is this. why they made that reference. Yes. Oh my gosh. It, so as he as they pull into the radio station for the first time, you're going, huh? I recognize that place. Wait like, a second. Wait a second. Wait right a second. next door. Wait a second though. This isn't a Christmas movie, though. <laughs> yeah. What the hell are you doing? And that's it for us, All guys. Right. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> We've been building up to this moment for a while. So Got people, him. Metalheads are rarely celebrating Christmas. Okay. Oh, that's right. Because they're pagan. That's right. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. You guys, you can't have music. You can't have guys in bands, people listening to music without booze. It's pretty, like, it's just like booze and music, booze and musicians. Uh, lately, you know, I was always like a, a beer guy when I was on stage playing shows, but lately it's been just a sipper of Cedar Ridge whiskey bef- right before I go on show and just right next to my drum set. I find it just, it kind of warms me up on the inside. It sort of calms my nerves, gives me that, whoo, whoo, let's go. But like, tastes good too. You know, like you could grab that Jaeger and get the same idea, but it just, eh, no thanks. Uh, We've been talking about Cedar Ridge Distillery for a long time. Best whiskey in the world, in my opinion. 
Uh, we got some very, very cool stuff coming up with them soon that you're going to want to pay attention to. We think you should go out and grab a bottle of their quintessential American single malt, their flagship bourbon, their collaboration with Slipknot called Number 9. It's a rye and a bourbon mixed together. Go to your local distributor store. Try to find some. If they don't have it, go to cedarridgewhiskey.com. Try to order some straight to your door. I know some states can't do it, but they're working on it. But you should see if your state does, because if you do, you're going to get a bottle shipped right to your door, and it's going to be fantastic. We love this whiskey, and if you are a responsible drinker and you love the taste of whiskey, you should try it too. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Well, scene four, the police <laughs> find Kayla, who arrives at the radio station to deliver the tape. However, the tape is damaged because she threw it out of the car earlier. They get in an argument, which results in the studio console being destroyed and unable to play the tape. As some of the items the band demanded from the police are brought into the station, the door shuts on Rex's plastic gun, revealing it to be fake. Some hostages run, but order is restored. A fake record executive arrives, but the band figures him out. Another person to talk about real quick, um, Marshall Bell in this oh is so good. I, I love his like his his ongoing fight with his wife and, <laughs> and wanting to tell everybody about it, especially Kramer. I love it so much. And then like uh, he gets he gets a hold of Kramer and he's like, what's going on in there? Are they molesting you in any way? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, what? 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 No, no, I t- no. <laughs> Did you ever pick up on that as a kid that Pip was the one that slept with his wife? Yes. Because like oh, for some reason, yeah, not and not as a kid. No. Yeah, for some reason that never. He's like, oh, the only thing we found was some pool cleaning supplies, pool and, cleaning. and that's very subtle. But then, yeah, then then they do it again, and he goes, oh no, like you can see him react, but. They just kind of downplayed. I never saw that as a kid. Underwear had the had the teeniest, weensiest little skin mark in it. And you would have you would have thought I started World War Three. Nah. He's like, like World War Eight or something, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I like. Uh, I know we we kind of talked about the uh, the uh, concert scene again, where he finds Kayla. Or yeah, yeah, Farley yeah. finds Kayla. Um, Kayla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, why? Why on earth? If you're if you're a human, just a general human, and you're going to go up to a person and essentially pick a fight with an exposed nipple ring. Yeah. Why on earth? What makes you think that that's off limits at this point? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> just <laughs> rips that, Just rips that thing clean off, and you're just like, yeah. What that's exactly what any of us would do. Like you're a giant dude. How do I weaken you? The whole piercing community uh, had to schedule like an uh, like an emergency uh, con- like a uh, meeting convention to be like, we need hey. to figure out how to get piercings back online because everybody watched Airhead and nobody wants a nipple piercing. Yeah. Anymore. How do we get this added into like the Geneva Convention? <laughs> that this is off limits in terms of battle. You can't do. You can't do that. <laughs> you, can't, hey, you can't rip somebody's nipple. We need to add that into like the no no dick shots. <laughs> uh, you can't rip off piercings. Only two, two and a half thrust motions yeah. to simulate oh, I'm, sex. I'm here to I'm here to legislate. There's been too much cop violence against piercings. Oh, the, see, oh, I, damn. I, I saw that footage and I it offended me. Yeah, I am not okay with it. Well, just the discrimination of against nipple piercings in general by the cops. Yeah. Well, I think I think it was targeted at one point or right, another. Right. Right. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Here to uh, lighten it up slightly commentary. a little bit. <laughs> Social I, commentary can be fun too. No, it can't. You guys all know we're from Iowa, so I, it's a public service announcement uh, that there is no town named Jerkwater, Iowa. I had to look it up. Okay. Oh, good. A lot of weird towns in Iowa, but nothing named Jerkwater, Iowa. No one in your uh, um, your. Uh, your yearbooks named Chester Oglefield or Oglefield? Ogley or no? No, okay. I, there was there was a moment here though when when the cops says, "Oh, is that right? Is that right, Chester? You know, like why 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 does he keep why does he keep calling you Chester? Hey, there's a lot he didn't tell you. Kate, Kayla, there's something I have to tell you. Yeah, he's a caveman. He's a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> Kid, he just he just needs to pop in. He's a caveman. He's a caveman. <laughs> That's all he, needs to be, he needs to be. He needs to be in every movie <laughs> where there's like a deceiving character <laughs> that happens. Like even Mrs. Doubtfire is like, he's a man. He's a man. He's a man. He just needs to be in every Brendan Frazier. Man. <laughs> man. 
It needs to be every Brendan Fraser thing. It's just like, it's like, oh my God, it's a mummy. It's like, he's a caveman. <laughs> he's a caveman. <laughs> I will, I, I don't know if that edit's going to go well, but you will see that one. <laughs> yeah, he's got something to tell you. He's a caveman. He's a caveman. <laughs> but, but also, like, I, I don't like that. Maybe, maybe I can't, maybe it's impossible for me to go back in time to how I would have felt at that age, but who gives a fuck if your name's Chester? Yeah. Yeah, no. I don't care. Who cares? There's My grandpa's a, name is Chester. It's a phenomenal name. There, it's a, it's I would have had a boy. It probably would have been called it's a Chester. Strong name. It's a strong name. Chet. Chet. I mean, I don't. I don't buy oh, oh. this whole thing. Like, oh, like no I one's gonna nerd. like. I was a nerd. I played D and D. I played D and D every day. I'm. A- what, what? I'm after it. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, who is that? <laughs> Somebody. Well, well, of course, the guy that says I was the editor of a school magazine. That's Lemmy. There's That's God. Lemmy. You got to put God in the movie. Yeah. Somehow. Oh, did they? They they should have credited him as such. <laughs> they already showed God. That, that, that would have been that, that would have been the movie. If it right just there. said uh, guy, school editor of the magazine, God. God. They already showed him. It was Rob. Rob Zombie. It wasn't. That was God. It, it was Lem. It, it was Lem. The- <laughs> What do you guys think about Harold Ramis in this? I love it. I it's such a what it's a, such a weird thing for him to do this movie. But two Ghostbusters, Ernie in the Hudson same movie? and Harold Ramis are, are it's so cool to see something but I, strange in this neighborhood. There is, yeah. and it's a it's it's the Lone Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's the ghost of rock and roll. No, I Ooh. I do like a the. <laughs> the test they give him is yeah. like, oh, yeah. trick, trick question. Lemmy is God. I like that a lot. He, he's a cop, you know. He, and I like how Joe Montana, Ian, at this point, is <laughs> along with them. Yeah. Like he's kind of with them. At this point, he's kind of said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm losing my job. Yeah. I believe in what you're doing. Anarchy is yeah. the way. Whatever. Yeah. I think that's. Uh, I think that's an important thing. Is uh, he? He is. He he is about as true rocker as it gets, you know. He's he's such a f- like big fan of what the music world is or should be, or once was, I guess at this point. Um, and he is at this point. He's kind of started you, and you see you see it a little bit in little bits along the way that he's buying into Brendan Fraser's like to to Chester's story, and he believes him. You know, he's like y- you. You do want this to happen. You have really committed yourself. Is like ah, I see, like I see what was what what used to happen in the music world, you know, and I see it in you. And then when he when he gets the gun and he's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the real gun or whatever, and he just hands it back to him. He's like, nah, I'm not gonna be a part of that, but I do support you yeah. in your mission. Well, so and one thing too, when they do give Kramer that exact gun a little bit before this, yeah, he goes through the vent and he's like up on top of the roof, and and like the SWAT gives him the gun. It's like, why doesn't the SWAT just go down there, dude? And why don't when they walk outside, why don't the cops just tackle them <laughs> and arrest them? There's <laughs> no fucking law here that goes, okay, we agreed that if you came out, we would talk to you face to face. That doesn't apply. Yeah, you have hostages. Yeah. If if this was a t- if there was a TV helicopter SWAT looking down on this, we'd all be on social media being like, "What the fuck are these cops doing? Just take them now!" Yeah, yeah. It, it's true. Uh, oh gosh, can you imagine if this was like we don't need another the Ruby age of Ridge social, on our hands. The, the age of social media. This is happening. Somebody be like Facebook living it the whole time. <laughs> Gross. Ugh. I I'd, I'd be seeing it on like real news, no bullshit or something. <laughs> yeah. And just like, like something along those lines. I can't imagine what this would be like on social media. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, let's do last scene. Jimmy wing comes to the radio station and offers the band a contract. They agree. And wing arranges an entire stage and sound system to be airlifted to the roof where the band will play their song for the now huge crowd outside. Refusing to lip sync, the band smashes the gear and dives off of the stage. They are later seen playing a gig in prison and going triple platinum. Hit it! If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Jimmy Wing, right? You want to punch uh, J- Judd Nelson? Yes. I mean, the, the sole the reason. Pe- the- okay, hey, super duper. <laughs> we're making <laughs> we're records. We're making records. I love him as a businessman. Fucking love him as a businessman. And I would not agree to punch him if it wasn't for that Fucking soul patch. The sole reason is the soul patch. The sole reason <laughs> is the soul patch. Two different uses of the same word. Yeah, he, he's getting he's getting a, he's getting punched from me. Do we think? Do we think that uh, Bender, after 
that exact scene right behind AJ. Um, went to LA, moved to LA, kind of bought into the whole kind of uh, establishment culture that he was kind of rebelling against. Realizes yeah, he gets a little older, realizes it's not not what he really is th- it really wants or like maybe someone gives him a little bit of a handout or a fist out Ooh. um and uh mm. he realizes like you know what making money is very cool and so he kind of buys into this culture and becomes this record producer in whatever his name is in this movie i Damn. think i think he ended up dating claire and yeah. claire wanted to move out to la and so he's like, well, I gotta go. I just, I just love, I just love this girl. And then she, of course, wanted to introduce him into the, to the fun, like right. the cool culture. So right. he, he actually bought into it for a little while, and then that changed him. He's like, I actually kind of like this life. Yeah, but yeah. You're right. I think it's, I think it's very possible. Here we are. I don't think I have anyone else that I want to punch as much as Jimmy Wing. So yes, I'm gonna go Jimmy Wing. Yeah. I'll what about David him. Arquette? Are we punching the stoner, or are we liking the stoner? Nah, he's fine. I do like his character a lot. I do too. I was like, Can you guys let me back in? <laughs> he wants back into it. That's hilarious. But then he shows some major aggression when they don't let him back in, and the cops grab him. He's like, "Come on!" Yeah, yeah. Like, it was kind of scary. Like I, think, I thought you were laid back, bro. I, I think they 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 didn't let him in for their own safety, not necessarily like his situation. <laughs> like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that dude in here, even though uh, we're the ones holding people hostage. Wait, <laughs> should we let a vet go, or this guy is? I'm staying. This is too cool. This, this, this is, is too, too cool, cool man. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played Game Boy the way he plays Game Boy, though. I'm not sure what was happening there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've never is, gone. It's not one of the shake packs. Yeah. Is that what that was? I don't know. Was that, I thought it looked like a Sega Game Gear it or something It might like have that. been. Okay. I just oh. I didn't own a Game Gear. I didn't either. Okay, but I saw fucking <laughs> Surf Ninjas. Hello. <laughs> the best Farley moment of this movie, though, is when the shots ring out. And he, and he dies. Physically. Mother of God! <laughs> he dies down. And then when he gets back up, tosses his hair yes. back. My God, he his physical comedy was untouched. Yeah. I, it seriously was. It's 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 nuts. I I love seeing seeing him in this. Um, it really the cast and the their performances and I and knowing that they're pretty much just themselves in this movie. Yeah really kind of takes this over the edge for me into a very good way as we'll as we'll get to uh in our in our final ratings but uh yeah i mean you put farley sandler anybody who's in this movie in this movie uh you can you really can't go wrong nope i i just have to ask like how do you guys feel um about the lip sync thing i think it's stupid that sean brought it up earlier where they're 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 getting everything they wanted and they're like no we want a record deal, but we don't want it because it, it's not the right way that we wanted it. And then they're getting to por- perform in front of the masses, make a music video, and they don't want to do it because they're not. It can't play it live. Like, See everything they want, they're getting, and then they're like, "Well, no, that's not how I wanted it." I, I, my my, que- I have two questions. Okay. Right, number one, I didn't realize that uh, for some reason I didn't like pick up all like right away that they were gonna shoot this as like a music video. Yeah, right. There's number one. I was like, because up to this point, I was like, yeah, like you don't you don't milli vanilli this concert. Like what the heck, bro? But then you're like, oh, they're shooting a music video. Oh, okay, that's fine. We have to sync it up in post. No, that makes perfect sense. Actually, every single person would be just even in music would be like, oh yeah, no, that actually makes a lot of sense. And then the other end of it too is, did they think they just rolled this whole thing out just so they could play like their one song? <laughs> as far as we know, they have one. Song. How many times are they going to play this one song? <laughs> That's what irks me the most about movies like this is where it's just like, yeah, you have. You, I want to hear a concert. I don't want to hear a performance on Jimmy Kimmel. Right, like yeah, it's can not you imagine enough. going to that and just seeing one song. Hey, come on, the only person who we waited can pull all this night, off. All, all of us waited all night out here. Yeah, and, and the bullets were flying. Yeah, <laughs> we want to see a performance now. Literally, shots were fired. Yeah, okay, so we want a performance. But that is what drove me nuts about it was they they did get everything they they wanted and they were going to get a music video even beyond Which what they is even wanted. Huge in this time. This is yes. like so this they would have been a TRL. MTV. Kurt Loder was there. Yes. Kurt Loder was oh my gosh. Just thinking about that right there. This would have been everything. This would have been it. Jimmy Wing is a smart motherfucker. Yeah. And they don't want to listen. Humanize the goons. Jimmy Wing yep. actually 
I might have to take my punch back. Now the soul patch earned it. Yeah, so he, if he shaves that off, yeah, I'm good. 100%. And, but you, you know what? Jimmy Wing is not an enemy here. That is a smart businessman, and he was about to make them wicked famous. Probably more famous than they would have been five-time platinum. I don't believe triple. you can actually rip up a contract. Like, I think once, no, it's, signed, once it's signed, I'm signed. pretty sure that's a thing. There is he's plenty of witnesses. Spent, he's already spent so much money to make this happen. Yep. It's, it's, it's basically once you sign your signature on a piece of paper and getting a deal with somebody like that, it's basically blood. Yep. Especially if they witness you yes. signing it. Yeah, they were all witnesses there. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Also, I did the one thing I didn't like is Milo's this big enemy throughout the whole movie, and then all of a sudden he's like, no, I'll help you with the contract. And then he's just like on their side, and he's just like a cool guy. Was, I think he's was he in it with Jimmy Wing. Yeah, yeah. I think Whatever. he's more business. He knows Jimmy Wing. I think he's like he know it's a contact that he's trying to keep. You know, okay. like you just hung up on a very important man. That kind of thing. That's yeah. true. You know. Uh, yeah, I I think he was just in it. But again, I'm still gonna go back to the the point that uh, they aren't the enemy in this whole thing. They almost just gave him exactly what they wanted, even and then some. Yep, man. Uh, just a friendly reminder to everyone, there was a quote in the movie about uh, how Vince Neil killed someone and only did 30 days in prison. That's right. Friendly reminder that Vince Neil did, in fact, kill someone. Mm. Uh, and he walked away with a concussion, killed someone. He got a $2.5 million fine, served 15 days in a county jail. What a piece of shit. Wow. So just re reminding you that if you are famous, you can do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. If you uh, like Molly Crew, just look up uh, their performances nowadays. And, Keep uh, them high. <laughs> I'm a don't call you, but get on kid. <laughs> it's great. Get up on the but get down hit me. Keep them high. Keep them high. Yeah, the, they're not that good. Little, dude, yeah, that like Muppet looking troglodyte just <laughs> bouncing around on that stage now. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. Just had to get that one out there. Got to get it out there. Oh, well, one, hey, yeah, one, go ahead. One last thing. I think uh, before Michael McKean says uh before they go out to shoot like the music video on the stage and everything michael bikin says oh we could get john landis just a little thing he like is like super under his breath he's like we could get john landis to do the video that's pretty nice <laughs> didn't hear that was he in the chair no but uh. like i was i was waiting for it and i'm like oh my god please because it's like harold ramus is there it's yes, like you got everybody else please please be please be uh, uh sandy Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Dang yeah, whatever. I can't remember Mortal Mortal Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we have dissected this movie scene by scene with a modern eye, so we got to give it a modern day rating to go against our nostalgia rating. AJ, what do you think about this movie? I I do try, uh, contrary to popular belief, I do try to uh, keep these as objective of, as possible, even though um, there's been some clear variances in that or outliers like uh, Just Friends. I try to keep all personal matters out of this, like to to really think whether or not this is a good movie. I do think this is actually a, a good movie. Um, I think it's a fun movie, and the personal aspect for me is that music world, right? And uh, there, I think there's a lot of truth even behind all the satire and jokes and and funniness that kind of goes on in this whole thing, even the ridiculousness of them holding this place up uh, just to do that, because nowadays. Uh, it would seem absolutely ludicrous to do that to a radio station. Yep. It's just not the same game anymore. And I think it's really great. I, I'm a sucker for this entire cast, um, you know, start to finish. And um, I, I had a, I had a really fun time watching it. I don't think it's uh, the most amazing movie for music, though, right? So that being said, I will give this um, a 7.4. 7.4, Sean, what about you, man? Uh, I echo ex everything that AJ just said. Um, yeah, I totally agree that it's very niche in the way that uh, we are all musicians and we kind of relate to all of this uh, as what's going on in this movie. Um, on top of the cast, uh, I I adore that uh, Michael Lehman just kind of let it loose. And uh, I can feel that. I can feel that this was a good time to make. Um, I, and I, I feel, I feel like this is a movie that it's the perfect movie for me to, uh, put on, on a, on a Saturday night when I just got home from like the bar or like a show or, you know, with out with you guys or something like that. It's a perfect movie to put on at that time to kind of fall asleep to. And I will always do that. Um, and I, I think there's a, a good place for movies like that. 
And I think that those movies aren't necessarily like bad movies, but they're not necessarily great either. You know, I would never be like, this movie stacks up to Goodfellas. <laughs> right, right. But um, in that aspect, I do think that this movie is super fun. And uh, I'm going to give this a per- like a perfect 7.1. Mm. Perfect 7.1 for Sean. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think you guys nailed it. Like, incredible cast, funny movie, hits home pretty significantly with the music aspect of being in a band. However, AJ, I didn't, I couldn't think of it until you just said it. Yeah, like the soundtrack to this movie is pretty garbage. Yeah. For a movie about music, the replacements are in it. Come on. uh, Yeah. uh, Very true. Yeah. It's just, but it's not, uh, is it significant? Is it forefront? Like, not really. You know, like, where I would much prefer a movie like Singles over it, it tackles the same thought process, but it just does a better job of telling the story and, and involving the music. Yeah. But that that being said, I, I I think it's a I think it's a fine, funny movie. Um, Sean, what did you say yours was? Seven point one. Okay, seven point one. I'm gonna go six point five on mine. Uh, Bud Larson, executive producer, says I'm not gonna lie. I was really hoping to review Airborne. That being said, this was a really hard movie to find on any streaming platforms. Yeah, sorry, man. I know. I didn't have the DVD, and it was just removed on HBO a month earlier. I did end up finding a friend that had it on Blu-ray. Why? I have no idea. I can believe the part where Chaz tries to get his demo played by Jimmy by sneaking into Palantine Records early in the movie. I can even believe breaking into the radio station to play your single. But once they took hostages, it was hard to watch and believe those parts of the movie. Chaz and Rex come outside to talk to the police multiple times. Why didn't the police tackle and arrest them? That's my same thought. The police are going to let a girlfriend join in on the hostage rescue. The believability of this was like a 1.5. Most punchable face, Jimmy Wing, prop from the movie The Stretch Armstrong from their apartment. Nice. Oh, that is call. a, we did not even talk about that. My modern day writing is going to be a little low, a 4.9. Ooh, Okay. So that takes us to a 6.48 as a group. Modern day mm. rating, 6.48. That's going to take us to number 74, just below Tremors, just abo- above Out Cold. That feels, that feels perfect. Perfection. I think me. so, man. Yeah. I'd put on Out Cold uh, going to it's bed one night. It's kind of the night. same thing, right? I, I, would go, I would put on Tremors going to bed one night, and I would put on this. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, just real quick, I really do think that um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, no. (laughs) See you later, guys. (laughs) Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. We are going to give you a bonus episode. We're going to go back. We're going to put a movie on trial like we did with Biodome. We are doing Boondock Saints All Saints Day. Oh, no. And following that up with a regular scheduled episode, The Fifth Element. God, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year, give you a little taste of what our bonus episodes are like. We did. I've never seen Cocktail. You got to listen to that. I No, that was a fun I episode. can't believe that's been a year. It's been a whole year since we've done Amazing. that. Movie is what dog a great shit. episode. That movie is dog shit. Watch it and uh, you will <laughs> and, know why. And, that, and it's so important to say, like, like, that's why you can't be like, this movie was terrible. Never watch it. Cocktail was dog shit. But watch go it. Watch but it. you have to watch <laughs> it. Please go watch it. It is a piece of art on how just terrible it is. Yeah. You have to watch it. And that actually brings up exactly what I just remember what I was going to say okay. is that we I don't uh, although I give a high rating or somebody like gives a low rating, I think the great thing about this is that it lands where it, it does, does in our overall rating. Somebody we might all be a play high. a part in that overall rating and when you just said that about this movie landing between Tremors and Out Cold amazing i think that is so great and it was the same thing about cocktail it's not a great movie it probably landed low go watch it yeah yeah i agree uh well my friends we have a voicemail call us at 319-804-9596 i didn't play one all right i didn't download one and this just gives me an opportunity (laughs) to tell you that we listen to all of them we appreciate every kind word. We don't you say. download every single one. We don't download them all. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to play them all. Sometimes it's just whatever I'm feeling that day. If you keep it right around a minute or below, and you have crystal clear audio, and you say some nice things, we'll probably play it. We're That's what I wanted to say. It. You got it. Take us out, AJ. Guys, thank you so much for listening. If you've made it through this whole episode and you've been listening along and you haven't left us a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. I just got to put that out there. 
If you want to drop us a five star, because I think there's been a few trollio trolls coming the back. Trolls there. are coming the out. Troglodytes are coming out of their cave. Yep. Why don't you just leave us a five star review? Uh, while you're at it, just write us something because we love to read them. Find us anywhere on social media. It's at Confused Breakfast, just anywhere on social media. Or just search for Confused Breakfast and check us out on YouTube because I love watching the little things in the background with us. Check out our merch store. You can get some shirts of ours. You can get some sayings that say, damn, dang it. You can get, get our logo on your chest. Get some mugs, and some stickers. Go to our uh, confusedbreakfast.com and uh, see our ratings as well. See our ratings of this movie. See our individual ratings of every movie we've ever done. Um, and just one shout out to uh, Cass Clothing Company. Sent us a little care package. Um, a very, very nice and endearing uh, letter. Uh, give us all some shirts. I'm wearing one right now. Thank you guys for this. These are really comfortable. Um, go check them out if you have some time. Uh, them uh, cool dudes making cool shit. We got uh, Carl and Sal. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and go to patreon.com slash confused breakfast. That is how you support us directly. You get all kinds of bonus episodes. We're going to do a bonus episode after this about uh, probably uh, the Oscars, yeah. stuff like that. So you get to listen to bonus content from us. You also get to vote on upcoming movies. This was a voted on movie. You do that at patreon.com slash confused breakfast. And this show is produced by Upload Media Group here in Cedar Rapids. We got Logan on the Logan. controls today. Thanks Logan. for being here. See, you gave a woo. And we are part of the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. You can learn more about cloud10.fm. That's it for us. Goodbye. Deuces. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. If it's too loud, you're too old. Rex, knock it off. Knock it off, Rex.